these two items are the filter caps for this amp and even though they're not worn out they're over 10 years old this amps a 75 so we're going to replace them anyway those exact filter caps are not available anymore what we're going to do is we've gotten the ones that uh, are used in Marshall style amps uh, with the accompanying clamp and uh, we're going to bend this tab so it fits on that mount there and we're going to mount it this way uh, this one is two sections of 40 microfarads at 450 volts and this guy is two sections of 50 microfarads at 500 volts so these are equivalent type items so we've already discharged our filter caps if you don't know how to do this that you shouldn't be doing this and we're now going to remove that bolt You want to tighten all these screws and nuts up, but not over tighten to the point where you puncture your filter cap or stress it. And that's as tight as the original was. And one other trick, uh, this is Ladies Clear Nail Polish. It's useful for many things, including repairing guitar finishes, because it's actually an extracellulose lacquer. But the other thing it's good for is making sure your bolts and nuts only come off when you want them to. That'll set up nice and hard, but not so hard that you can't break it with any tool. I probably should shorten those wires, but... Soldering, always remember to heat the work, not the solder. Feed the solder in once everything's heated. Gets to a point where it runs, and then it goes everywhere. Get a nice solid connection. There we go. That's uh, nice and solid in there. This is a 1973 Guitar Mate, and what I've done here is I've desoldered the uh, twist lock Mallory capacitors. They look like this, an aluminum canister. The grounds are on these edges, and it uh, requires a fairly massive soldering iron to get that uh, solder going. I actually use two 80 watt irons together to heat it up, and then I, uh, then I lift the tabs. Uh, so this is the one of the filters. This one is was new in the amp, so it's uh, 
uh, fairly old. What you want to do whenever you're replacing filters, you want to meet or exceed the voltage and you want to match as closely as possible the uh, microfarad rating unless of course you have your own ideas about what will sound better. Generally speaking uh, those ideas won't work out too well. The stock filtering is the way to go. There's all sorts of problems that can be caused by too much or too little filtering. In this case uh, and once I remove these I actually drill out two holes and I use the Marshall style clamp that I buy along with the new Marshall style filters. In this case it's a 50-50 and what I do with an amp like this is I go 50-50 for the first stage and then I use a JJ3232 for the second stage. So total capacitance adds up to be the same However, there's more energy stored in the power amp, which uh, can be a good thing, and it's only marginally a marginally different amount. You will not be able to find any 40-40 capacitors. Anyway, uh, the clamp goes on, unscrews, slides on this. If you get your holes right, you line everything up, clamp it back in place. The nice thing about the clamp is you can replace the filters every 10 or 15 years or so without having... Uh, to desolder those connections and without having to desolder those grounds and uh, hopefully Marshall style filters will be around for a long long time they certainly made enough amplifiers